Unit 9, Big Data and Privacy. This will be broken up into several different recordings so that you can listen to and watch the ones that you want. This first recording will be on Lesson 1, which is Big Data. The digital world is constantly collecting more and more data. Whenever you use an online service, you are contributing to a data set of user behavior. Even by simply using electricity and water in your house, you're contributing to a data set of utilities usage. With the increasing number of people and cities connected to the internet, data sets are increasingly larger in size. One report estimates the total size of digital data will be 175 zettabytes in 2025. Notice here in 2022, when I'm recording this, we're like half of that. How much data is 175 zettabytes? Well, a single zettabyte is a trillion gigabytes. A modern smartphone stores about 32 gigabytes. To store 175 zettabytes, we would need 6 trillion smartphones. 1,000 smartphones for every living person. Wow, that's a lot. But how big are individual data sets? A single MRI scan results in 20,000 images. Google processes 3.5 billion search queries per day. Instagram users post 54,000 photos each minute. An autonomous vehicle generates 11 terabytes of data each and every day. Twitter users post 3,000 tweets every second. Big data sets are so large that our traditional ways of storing and processing them are no longer adequate, presenting challenges to computer scientists and data engineers. On the plus side, they're also so large that they offer new opportunities for analysis that were impossible on small data sets. Remember the law of large numbers? Big data is a term that describes the large volume of data, both structured and unstructured, that inundates a business on a day-to-day -day basis. But it's not the amount of data that's important. It's what organizations do with the data that matters. Big data can be analyzed for insights that lead to better decisions and strategic business moves. Where does big data come from? Well, we get it from medical records, digital libraries, scientific research, user-facing applications. Storing big data. In 2020, a standard laptop might have a 256 gigabyte hard drive. That could fit 840,000 tweets, 280 characters, username, timestamp, 96,000 photos, compressed JPEGs, 66,418 songs, compressed MP3s, 224 movies, compressed MP4s. For the average user, 256 gigabytes is quite a lot. But for a company operating at a global scale, it's barely anything. Twitter users post 500 million tweets a day. And many of those tweets include photos. They would need more than 500 of those 256 gigabyte hard drives to store the data for a single day of usage. Solution? Dozens of hard drives can be connected together using a disk array or disk enclosure. When an organization has thousands of hard drives to manage, they can house them in a data center, a building dedicated entirely to housing computers and data storage devices. The inside of a data center, like this IBM cloud data center, contains multiple aisles of computing equipment, plus the necessary infrastructure to provide electricity and prevent device overheating. If you notice here, okay, you'll see down here the floor is vented. This is usually what we call a raised floor. It's got forced air blowing up from the bottom as well as up here to cool the entire area. Processing data. A large data set can take a long time to process, regardless of whether the data set can fit on a single hard drive. Let's imagine that engineers at Twitter want to determine how many tweets contain a particular hashtag. Hashtag COVID vaccine. 
the code to determine whether a single tweet contains the hashtag requires only 0 0.0001 seconds. The code to analyze 500 million tweets, the amount posted each day, would require this much time. So 0 0.0001 times 500 million. That's 50,000 seconds or 13.4 hours. The engineers have two options at this point. Come up with a faster per tweet algorithm or use parallel computing to process the data in parallel. So notice what seems like a very fast process. Boom, can count it, no time flat. Because of the sheer volume, turns into more than half of a day's worth of time. The engineers can probably figure out some ways to improve the efficiency of the hashtag check. But even if they manage to reduce the time by a factor of 10, it would still take an hour and a half to analyze a day's worth of tweets. If they hope to analyze more than that, like a month of tweets, a year of tweets, or all tweets ever, they will need to use parallel computing. Recall that parallel computing takes as long as its longest sequential task. So each tweet can be analyzed independently of other tweets. So this type of data processing can be easily paralyzed. And that's not stopped, it's paralyzed, done in parallel. The work can also be distributed with multiple machines working on a subset of the data in parallel. For example, 10 machines could process 100 million tweets and send back a count of how many tweets contained COVID vaccine to a central machine. Once that machine received the count from each of the five machines, it could sum them up and report the count total. So the 0 0.0001 times 10 million is equal to 1,000 seconds or 16.67 minutes. That gets sent back and added together. <clears throat> Responsible use of big data. Much of the data in these large data sets is related to people in some ways. Health records, application data, geolocations. Whenever any organization is storing and processing massive data sets that either represent or affect humans, they must be extremely careful. Here are just a few of the ethical considerations with big data. If the data includes PII, that's personal identifying information, is it necessary? If so, it, is it secure via encryption? Essentially, if you're gonna do stuff with personally identifying information, you need to make sure that your data is encrypted. For any personal information in the data, are the persons aware that their data is being collected and stored? If not, that could be a violation. Are people allowed to request deletion of their personal data? If they delete their personal data, then you don't have a general representation. Who's most likely to delete their data? Is there a plan to automatically delete the data when it is no longer needed? If the data will be analyzed to come up with conclusions, was there bias in the way the data was collected? If the data will be used to justify a change in user-facing product, Will there be monitoring to ensure no users are harmed by the change? A lot of ethical questions here that you might not have thought of previously. We all tend to live in our own little microcosm and think about our own little issues or problems or the repercussions on us. When you're working with big data and you're processing big data, you have to be aware of all the people that could be affected and all the different ways it might affect them. Beneficial and harmful effects of computing. People create computing innovations mostly to improve the world in some way. Not every effect of a computing innovation is anticipated in advance. A single effect can be viewed as both beneficial and harmful by different people or even by the same person. Advances in computing have generated and increased creativity in other fields, such as medicine, engineering, communications, and the arts. Computing innovations can be used in ways that their creators had not originally intended. The World Wide Web was originally intended only for rapid and easy exchange of information within the scientific community. Definitely not limited to scientific community any longer. 
Targeted advertising is used to help businesses, but it can be misused at both individual and aggregate levels. Machine learning and data mining have enabled innovation in medicine, business, and science. But information discovered in this way has also been used to discriminate against groups of individuals. In some ways, computing innovations can be used Computing innovations can be used may have a harmful impact on society, the economy, or culture. Responsible programmers try to consider the unintended ways their computing innovations can be used and the potential beneficial and harmful effects of these new uses. It is not possible for a programmer to consider all the ways a computing innovation can be used. There are people out there who will come up with a way to use something that you never even dreamed of. Computing innovations have often had unintended beneficial effects by leading to advances in other fields. Rapid sharing of a programming or running a program with a large number of users can result in significant impacts beyond the intended purpose or control of the programmer. An example, Tally from the 100. Tally stands for Applied Lucent Intelligence Emulator. This was a recurring character in the second, third, fourth, and sixth season of The 100. Allie is an artificial intelligence, um, is artificial intelligence. Allie's core command was to make life better for mankind. However, this makes her too bound to her ways to change when she is convinced something is for the best of mankind. Allie believes that the reboot or that the root problem of humanity is too many people, seeing overpopulation as a threat to human survival. To solve this issue in 2052, she launched a nuclear strike with the intention to save humanity from extinction by wiping out the majority of Earth's human inhabitants. So you think that protecting mankind or making life better for mankind is a positive thing, but this example takes it too far. Data mining. Data mining is the process of finding anomalies, patterns, and correlations within large data sets to predict outcomes. Using a broad range of techniques, you can use this information to increase revenues, cut costs, improve customer relationships, and reduce risks and more. So why is data mining important? Well, you've seen the staggering numbers. The volume of data produced is doubling every two years. Unstructured data alone makes up 90% of the digital universe. But more information does not necessarily mean more knowledge. Have you ever just felt overwhelmed by the amount of information? That can happen. Data mining allows you to sift through all the chaotic and repetitive noise in your data, understand what is relevant, and then make good use of that information to assess likely outcomes. You can also accelerate the pace of making informed decisions. Is data mining harmful? Well, harnessing the power of data analytics is clearly a competitive advantage. Think targeted ads. Overzealous data mining can easily backfire. As companies become experts at slicing and dicing data to reveal details, as personal as mortgage defaults and heart attack risks. The threat of egregious privacy violations grows. Hip clothing retailer Urban Outfitters is facing a class action lawsuit for allegedly violating consumer protection laws by telling shoppers who pay by credit card that they had to provide their zip codes, which is not true, and then using that information to obtain the shoppers' addresses. Facebook is often at the center of a data privacy controversy whether it's defending its own enigmatic privacy policies or responding to reports that it gave private user data to the National Security Agency. Machine learning. Machine learning is an application of artificial intelligence that provides systems the ability to automatically learn and improve from experience without being explicitly programmed. Machine learning focuses on the development of computer programs that can access data and use it to learn for themselves. Essentially, machine learning works hand in hand with probability. The more times a machine does something and a particular outcome occurs, they learn. Do this, here's the result. 
The process of learning begins with observations or data, such as examples, direct experience, or instruction, in order to look for patterns in data and make better decisions in the future based on the examples that we provide. The primary aim is to allow the computers to learn automatically without human intervention or assistance and adjust actions accordingly. Is this harmful? Is machine learning harmful? Well, many companies are turning to machine learning to review vast amounts of data, from evaluating credit for loan applications to scanning legal contracts for errors, to look through employee communications with customers to identify bad conduct. But while machine learning algorithms enable companies to realize new efficiencies, they are as susceptible as any system to the garbage in, garbage out syndrome. In the case of self-learning systems, the type of garbage is biased data. Left unchecked, feeding biased data to self-learning systems can lead to unintended and sometimes dangerous outcomes. In 2016, for example, an attempt by Microsoft to converse with millennials using a chatbot plugged into Twitter famously created a racist machine. Links contain strong language. You actually have the article in your, or at least my students have the article in their handouts. That switched from tweeting that humans are super, super cool to praising Hitler and spewing out misogynistic remarks. This scary conclusion to a one day experiment resulted from a very straightforward rule about machine learning. The models learn exactly what they are taught. Crowdsourcing. Crowdsourcing is the practice of engaging a crowd or group for a common goal, often innovation, problem solving, or efficiency. In order to crowdsource successfully, a business must first break a larger project up into individual micro tasks. Workers will then unite to tackle these micro tasks in small pieces, effectively expediting the process. The way businesses decide to gather workers that will perform tasks often correlates with the kind of task that needs to be completed. A business may use a digital space, sometimes called a crowdsourcing platform or micro labor site, to unite these workers into one place and serve them the micro tasks. One of the most famous examples of a company that uses, uses crowdsourcing in this way is Waze. There are many mobile ready GPS apps available on the market but Waze sets itself apart from the competitors like Google by crowdsourcing travel-specific information into its product. Users enter, enter information about traffic jams, road hazards, and even police radar hotspots, then makes this information visible to users. This not only results in a GPS product that provides consumers with more value, but also transforms the product into a community-driven app that keeps their users actively engaged. In practice, however, most crowdsourcing initiatives end up in an overwhelming amount of useless ideas. Consider BP's crowdsourcing initiative. When a 2010 explosion on the Deepwater Horizon rig caused the largest oil spill in history, a desperate BP turned to the public to find ways to clean it up. The company received about 123,000 ideas from more than 100 countries within just a few weeks. Sifting these ideas was an enormous undertaking and most of them turned out to be completely unusable. It was described as a lot of effort for little result. Dealing with a full submission box is not only extremely time consuming and costly, it also has biases about how ideas are selected. When firms receive too many ideas, they tend to focus on ideas that are already familiar to them, defeating the entire purpose of crowdsourcing, which is to surface new thinking. Next up, data tracking.